Hello, everyone. Uh, so this session is about teaching Sparkle. Uh, the presenter is Martin Polter. So I leave you the stage. Have fun. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I trust you'll agree that Wikidata is great. It has lots of interesting data on different topics. The tools people make with it are fun to use and fun to explore uh, with and easy to use. Uh, and maybe you'll agree with the suggestion that uh, to get the best out of Wikidata, you need to, to know Sparkle and you need to be able to phrase your own queries. So you might see that as a, a barrier, an obstacle, that uh, we ideally need a big program of training for developers, for librarians, for curators, for, for ordinary people uh, to get them literate in this uh, language, and that's a big effort, um, uh, an aspect of, of uh, Wikidata outreach. Uh, my suggestion is to kind of turn that around, that Wikidata, especially the query service, because it's so helpful, because it's so full of good stuff, because it's so colourful, because um, it has so many visualisation abilities, is the ideal platform for people to learn Sparkle, also to learn about databases, learn about knowledge representation, learn about data in computers. There's no necessity that someone's first encounter with data in computers has to be a relational database system. Uh, so I'm going to put forward, I'm going to report on a training workshop I've delivered to uh, library staff in the University of Oxford, and I've also done as a public event, so just with uh, uh, members of the public coming to an open data week that the university hosted, and I've also done some of this with researchers as well. Um, so I, I teach in a way that is very particular to me, so it's not like I hand over materials to you. I'll show you my approach and then you will take it up and improve on it and make it personal to you and the audiences you're dealing with. And I want to avoid this, so I, in my career I've had to learn data technologies and SQL and XML and the content of tutorials or e examples uh, but is very much like this. I'm not objecting to the language because that's what you've got to learn, but uh, employees, invoices. Uh, so your task might be you have a team of, uh, you have a sales force and you've got to uh, identify the person who sold the most items and calculate their bonus and then issue the invoices to the customers. And it's the most boring, <laughs> I can't get excited about that or I'm not, I don't feel like I'm learning a topic. Um, with Wikidata, we have so many topics we can engage people in, and it might be things in the solar system or, or characters in Shakespeare, or things in the solar system named after characters in Shakespeare, which is what most of this is. Um, so when you have a teaching approach, one question is, what things do you leave out? So in this uh, the, the workshop I run, I don't explain what Sparkle stands for. That doesn't help you write Sparkle at all. It doesn't help to explain what RDF is. Obviously, it's historically really important, but telling people there's a format for describing resources, and it's called resource description format, and resources, whatever's described, but it's not really a format. That doesn't help people. That, that gets people no closer to actually practically uh, using this. Linked open data, LOD, I, I may mention, so the, the library and museum professionals that come to my training have definitely heard about linked open data and know that it's the future of their discipline and it's going to revolutionise their work. But at the moment, they're not using that kind of system. So they've not seen a real practical example of that technology. So that's what they're going to get from this. So I might mention linked open data, but I don't get into the definition. I, I basically say this is a service you can use for free. It's been given to you to use for free, and that gets the point, the point across. Semantic identifiers and namespaces I want to get across implicitly. I don't want to teach people these concepts, but I want them to pick up the concepts even if I don't use the terms. Reification, uh, so people already using a RDF database want to know does Wikidata have statement IDs, and uh, I try to avoid that. I, I hardly even mention Wikidata. So these workshops are, are advertised as like introduction to Sparkle, or for the public event one, it was ans asking and answering questions with open data. Um, and then in the blurb, I'd say we're going to be using this platform, and I'll introduce it and say, well, this is the best platform on which to you learn this language, this skill. It's the most helpful, it's got the most interesting stuff. And then in the course of the workshop, maybe we'll get into more about Wikidata, why this exists, who put this data here. Um, so uh, there's a whole lot of background that kind of professional 
RDF or linked data people will have, but, but you don't need. I just want to get people thinking about nodes and arcs and thinking in triples and imagining how a, a triple representation can be created and queried. I want them to phrase questions in their own language and translate into Sparkle via a kind of a baby talk intermediary, but I want them to think in triples and uh, just get used to, th to thinking, asking questions in that way, and just to get to the point where they ask interesting questions relevant to their work or their hobbies or whatever, and they come away with uh, something. So it's not the theoretical understanding that I'm getting in these quite short sessions. And the first thing I present them with is this. They've got to look at this, and there's a what-the-hell reaction. Uh, in the workshop and probably in the room now because well, I thought this was about uh, technology skills we're acquiring. Why have we got to look at a cute dog? Um, but this is to introduce my toy world. So there are three human beings. Two of them are a married couple. Uh, one is the child from that couple. There are two beings that are pets of this couple and we've got the types of the pets. Clearly, this is not official data. Clearly, this is not, but this, this knowledge representation, which it is, only exists in this slide. It's not a, a database. So I'm getting people thinking of a toy world. And there's loads that can be learned from just discussing this and kind of role-playing about this. And you're going to make your own, <coughs> your own toy world. Um, uh, so a point to come from this is this isn't a representation of my family, of all my, family, of all my parents' pets. It's a tiny fragment um, when we query things, we're querying a representation of the world, not the world. There's so much that's missed out. Um, uh, that's a really important first lesson to get about any database and any querying. Uh, so everything's expressed uh, in, uh, in triples, in nodes and arcs. Arcs have a direction. Uh, how do the names work? So there's one of these nodes is marked Bob. Is that the name Bob? There's, so... Uh, does that stand for the name Bob? Well, not quite, because other people use the name Bob. And Dan, you probably know a Bob. Bob you, yeah, you know a Bob. And that's the Bob I think. Well, right, no, th th that isn't this Bob. So we talk about that. So names are relative to the system that they're in. And we could talk about Martin's Bob and Dan's Bob not being the same person. So it's not the names. So we could think of them as relative to a system. So we could even say, like, Martin colon Bob is the name for one thing, and Dan, colon, Bob, identifies another thing in another system. Um, I emphasize triples. So three things you might be tempted uh, to say, uh, Cindy and Bob together have a pet dog, but you can't do that in this system unless you have a node for, for the couple. Things have to have a direction. That may not make much sense. There's a married couple. That doesn't have a direction. That's a relation between two people. But we are modelling it with things that have a direction, so we have to have two for the two directions. Um, there are arbitrary choices. So why have Cindy has child Martin and not Martin has parent Cindy? It's an arbitrary choice. Arbitrary choices like that, choices of name, choices of direction, are built into this system and intrinsic. So there are arbitrary choices to be made how to represent this, uh, even the same facts could be represented different ways. Who makes that decision? Well, whoever creates the system, whoever sets up the uh, knowledge-based system. <clears throat> so people can see that this, it, what we call serializable, this could be expressed as triple statements. So Cindy has pets, Tilly, Martin is a human. And getting to the, uh, the core insight is comparing, how do we make a question in English? Well, we have a statement, and it's incomplete. Like, um, uh, uh, who has pet Tilly? So we go from Cindy has pet Tilly to who has pet Tilly. We've taken something out, we've put in a placeholder, and we've introduced a question mark. I say, that's just like what we do with Sparkle. We, we take uh, something out, we have an incomplete statement or incomplete statements. Uh, we put a placeholder in the, the missing place and we have a question mark to mark that that's a placeholder. Uh, so it can be a role play where like, I'm the query service for this knowledge base. And uh, so people can learn what a query service does by kind of seeing a query service and role playing and being a query service, which we'll get to. Um, so people can see that working on the level of triples. Um, 
uh, yeah, who has pet Tilly? Um, if you say that to me, and I, I can say results, Cindy, Bob. Um, then I put it to, to the trainees, how do you ask more complicated questions? So, uh, who has a dog as a pet? And look at this, and some will get it straight away. Some will say, um, oh, it's a triple, who, question mark, has pet dog? Say, so, well, my role as the query service is to look at this and match your triple, who has pet dog? So I've got to find things that have pet dog, and, and results none. So this is a discussion, what is this node I've called dog? It's not a dog. Although it's, it's, it's called dog, it's not a dog. It stands for a class. So um, obvious when you're a Sparkle user, but this is getting people over the threshold of thinking in this way. And you've got to do what kinds of things have pets. People see that they can't do that in one triple. Uh, you've got to do multiple triples. And those multiple triples are asked for multiple things. Uh, uh, so if you've got what kinds of things have dogs, uh, have pets, then you're going to identify people, and then you're going to identify those types. And it naturally comes up, well, how do I specify the columns I want? How do I specify that I want the types? That's the question. And then you say, well, you have these partial statements, and you enclose them in uh, curly brackets and put select. Um, uh, so, so this is kind of the first half hour of the workshop, and it's not on computers. It's all with role play and thinking about this. And... Um, uh, I invite people uh, to, in the workshop to make their own toy world, and you will make your own toy world. I hope after this. So eight, so five minutes, eight to ten nodes to represent your family, your workplace, the thing you're working on, the TV you're watching last night, and to have some meaningful uh, links between them. And the lesson that you, you make arbitrary decisions, you name things, you create properties, but they're they're the, the uh, creation of the, the person who sets up the the. Um, knowledge system. And then, in pairs, they uh, explain their graphs to each other and query. So what's a query you could ask about uh, this little world and then what would be the answer? So, um, like I say, people mostly get it, but people want like a four or five part relation. So they might want to say, this couple have together have a pet, or they might want to say, Tilly is a pet, is a dog. You've got, and you've got to enforce, no. Uh, no, it's triples, and triples have a direction. Um, so I'll explain what a triple is and say, also, not in this example, but triples generally, uh, they have an item, they have a property, and then they have uh, a number of other things, which could be values, could be time periods, could be uh, locations on a globe. Um, uh, so, so with that role play exercise, we're 40 minutes into a two-hour workshop and in a computer room, and we haven't touched computers yet. But I think it's useful to get uh, people thinking in that way and to think about how they would make the model and what the query is and to actually translate and to do a translation exercise. So, uh, and then I direct people to uh, query wiki, query wikidata.org. Um, so there's a bunch of things they've got to take on. We've been doing, I will have had a flip chart and we will, is that six? Six minutes elapsed? Six. Right. Um, uh, so I'll give them a task. Uh, I don't want them to learn Q numbers and P numbers, so I'll tell them what the, uh, the names are and show them the control shift trick. But there's a lot to take on. So they're taking on Q numbers and P numbers. They've seen the triple format and they've seen select, but uh, they've got to apply this all in one go. So, it, it's, um, so I'll give people a task. Some will get it immediately, some will struggle because they missed a bit of discussion, or more often because they're familiar with another kind of database system and they have particular expectations from that. Um, uh, so I set like bonus things or, or more complicated things if they're people are getting bored, or I say if you get bored and you work on a, a, an entirely different question, uh, that's fine, but show me. Um, so I'll run through this in front of them, tell them to do it, just show the hints of what properties they'll be using, and then run through it again, and then go through the cycle of adding on extra things to enhance the query. So you might have done a query, and they'll say, here's how you add on an optional property. Um, uh, and then 
give them a task involving optional property. In the Bodleian, I say find manuscripts in Latin uh, for a public event at the University of Bristol, where there's lots of celebrities who study at the University of Bristol, so I uh, get that as an example. Um, yeah, so going to the interface, there's still a, a, a hump in the, um, the, the learning curve uh, because um, they've got to put the query into action, they've got to think in this language, and they've got to um, look up uh, Q numbers and P numbers, and then there's all the things they can do with the query once they've done it, and the visualization options, the bookmarking, uh, getting the data. Uh, um, so yeah, I'll suggest refinements, and so we can take, uh, it's a succession of steps of getting people doing a query and taking it up to the next level. Um, like, yeah, find landscape paintings taller than they are wide. So, uh, within a two-hour thing, we can get people doing basic queries, doing, uh, adding refinements onto them, doing optional, not, didn't do much filtering, um, but starting to introduce measurements and so on, uh, not getting into qualifiers or another level, uh, if it's a whole day thing, I probably could. Um, it comes up, inevitably, uh, where else can I use the Sparkle language? And I observed that that is a question, and questions can be framed in Sparkle and put to Wikidata, and you'll get answers, and there is a Wikidata property called Sparkle Endpoint. So when they ask that, that becomes their task, and then they get that list of institutions that have Sparkle Endpoints. Um, and it's worth pointing out, so in an introductory session on other computer languages, people will uh, typically learn how to do loops, how to do functions, how to do uh, conditionals. They'll learn the basic grammar, but they won't make something fantastic and useful. They'll just learn the uh, basic grammar. But in uh, an introductory session on Wikidata Sparkle, you can make, if you're interested in German literature, a map of the birthplaces of German poets and so on. And so we get feedback like this. This is how great the Wikidata query service is as an educational tool. Uh, what is this sorcery? It isn't even from someone in the room. A trainee in the room made a map, emailed it to her colleagues and got back, what is this sorcery? How have you made this? And was just not expecting... Um, this to happen. People are, not expect, people are not expecting to look at the picture of the cute dog. They're not expecting to do the role play where they represent their family and query each other. Uh, they're not expecting to actually make something concrete which they take away as a link and show to their colleagues. And all of this, being unexpected, makes it memorable and makes them want to go away and talk to other people about it. It's not like your run-of-the-mill IT training. And uh, the lower quote is from a researcher who, yeah, who, who saw how he could make a map of famous people with his first name and another one of, of famous people with his wife's first name. And then he just had more and more ideas of, of things, charts and so on, he's going to create with Wikidata. And so he's glad to say, oh, you've destroyed my productivity for the next month. Uh, so that's my recommendation. I, I think we can take it as a positive. And we take beyond training people about Wikidata, training people about data, the, the stuff that came up in the keynote this morning, right? making people literate about ideas of uh, representation uh, and um, starting people off in being involved in that discussion involves this familiarity. So this could be done. It doesn't have to be like a workplace training thing. It could be a public event to get people f f familiar with these technologies. But I will stop there for discussion. And like I say, it's respectfully submitted to people in the room who do Sparkle training a different way. But I hope this is useful to you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Are there any questions? Hi, it's Mohammed Hijau from Bonistein. Uh, thank you for the session. Um, I was wondering if there are resources that we can get to learn Sparkle language professionally. Um, I've got the Sparkle book, the O'Reilly book. I, I find the wiki book on Sparkle is really, really useful. I, that, that's like the most useful and accessible reference. Uh, the tutorials, yeah, the tutorials on Wikidata itself, I can vary in quality. 
Um, I think I think that they are for beginners. I can handle with the sparkle, but in, in the beginner level. But I want to deal it with it professionally. Um, yeah, I, I, so my concern is to get as many people as possible across the threshold into being aware of how this works and, and dabbling. Um, uh, yeah, I'd like it to be a deeper course, like going into more of the, the uh, how it works, qualifiers and references and so on. Um, we're in a professional context, you're probably aiming towards people using a particular Sparkle endpoint. And Wikidata has some customizations, uh, discussed on Twitter, that there's some things we use that actually aren't a Sparkle standard, they're like a, an optimization. Um, so in the professional context, um, uh, I'd hope it would be tailored to that particular data set and endpoint. Um, but there's not a demand for that yet, because like I said, I deal with people who are aware of linked open data and are worried that's a good thing but haven't seen an example yet, they haven't an example they can apply to their work, they're not enthusiastic about it yet. Uh, so I think we want to get my whole workplace and other workplaces and developers across that threshold to where they're demanding that kind of uh, really in deep, like using an endpoint in the library kind of training. Thank you. Um, it's just a question. Uh, I really like that. Thank you so much. Uh, is it documented step by step anywhere? Um, I can share my succession of, uh, of tasks. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's very much tailored to where I'm presenting it. Like I said, with librarians, I start with manuscripts and go on and um, uh, the public things. You want to end up with people asking a question, which is the question they came in their heads to the event with. Um, uh, but yeah, and uh, so yeah, there's a set, an order of um, like querying with a, a triple, and then with multiple triples, and then with an optional triple, and then with a measurement and a filter, and so on. And it, it's the uh, yeah, I can share. Like the exercise. Um, I, I, yeah, I'll share a separate set of slides for those exercises. Yeah. Thank you so much because I will okay. take that and customize it for my own needs. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Um, what would you recommend if, um, if you also want to teach editing apart from just querying? Um, I'm, I'm pleasantly, uh, I'm pleased to report that people find wicked data editing when I demonstrate it to be so simple that they, it, just, it just takes them by surprise because it's wicked data editing and I'm going to add knowledge to this huge knowledge base. Sounds like something that really technical people can do. And then you show it and they go, oh, oh, right, oh, Martin is instance of human. Um, uh, so I haven't done that systematically uh, yet. I, I, um, I think a precondition would be getting people thinking in triples. And, and maybe that triples, underlined triples need references and triples need uh, qualifiers and, and uh, that multiple triples can be, you know, triples have multiple conflicting values. Um, so I'd still do the toy world, the maybe more professionally relevant toy world and, and uh, translation exercise, but then go to, um, so now the exercise we're going to do with triples is adding them. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work down there, maybe Jason's done that, with, with getting... Um, a table of identifiers. So something I'd like to do, that there's um, uh, an online database of, of uh, people who've won a Rhodes Scholarship. There's a scholarship to Oxford University from uh, other countries, and, but it's not in Wikidata yet. So you can kind of divide up the room and say, you're going to find these people in Wikidata, and your task is to add uh, with the reference to this online database. Um, and then you can do a query to see how many have been added in that session. Um, so I think that with all the, the training I do, I think the comprehension is more important than the, the taking action immediately. So when I'm training people on Wikipedia, I first show them article histories, contribution records, talk page, quality scale, so they're comprehending what the, the process before they click edit and, uh, and actually change something. Not really a question, but a comment. Um, Go ahead. 
Um, there is, uh, for beginners, a good uh, tutorial uh, on YouTube how to query and start with Sparkle. And uh, if you go, want to go deeper, also uh, how to add data with OpenRefine. Um, and I've also uh, made some videos and uploaded them in German language. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, I should also mention Henry Thorsten, who's, a, who's uh, from Stanford Library, did last week a really good video capture of adding a data set to Wikidata with OpenRefine. This is for the LD4P, the Linked Data for Production Project and States. Really, and that, that was a really good video tutorial I'd recommend to anybody for... Yeah, that's the next couple of levels up from uh, what I'm doing. Yeah. Is there a last question? Uh, oh. So it's Sparkle's sort of SQL-ish. If yeah. someone walks into your tutorial with an SQL background, is that a blessing or a curse? How do you? It's a bit of a curse because I had to learn SQL. I, so I did the um, or, yeah, generate the invoices using SQL for your fictitious, fictitious company, um, and definitely had to unlearn an SQL way of thinking about things to get to Sparkle. But it was freeing. It was freeing. Databases without built-in schemas are liberating. Um, uh, when you think about how many columns there are, and it's this number of columns for a book, and it's this number of columns for an address, and, 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 and it's just three columns. Well, you know, three and a bit more. Um, that's really liberating. But it's, So that's my point I kind of glanced at, that um, the, people make different progress in these workshops, as in all training, but it's not like intelligent versus dumb. It's like the, pre, the preconceptions you're coming with are more the obstacle. So it's actually more, um, yeah, I'm more op optimistic about training people who have never encountered databases, coding, or any of that before, than, uh, yeah, the worst people to try and train are linked data experts because they've used DBpedia a lot. They're, they're used to a particular approach of querying and, and expecting to get certain things, and it looks odd when, when Wikidata does things differently. And they need to get with the program. Okay, let's thank Martin for his insights. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs>